Let's look at a slightly more complicated example of using UVs to line up a texture to a 3D model. So I'm just going to open up my next project and it is, and it is important to set up a project because I have an input, in this case textures coming into my file. And we like to keep our files, our scene files and our textures within a Maya project hierarchy. So here I'm setting my project, I'm going into this one, uh, I'm going into 03 Maya Dice and I can see my workspace man is just here and I can set my project. And one quick way to check that it's been set correctly is just to hit Control and O for open and we'll see that it opens up inside in the scenes folder and I can open up 01 Dice UV Begin here. And here we are in our next file and this model here is meant to represent a dice and again it's a very simple scene and this is not a very clean model it hasn't been modeled very nicely at all you can see that the topology here is not particularly nice but it will do just fine for testing out uvs and textures it is meant to be a dice so we're going to load in a texture of a dice and we need to line up each number so that they are on the correct faces of our dice here so with the box selected, let's jump over to the attribute editor. And again, you can see we have this Lambert one shader that's been applied. We definitely don't want to be using that one. So I'm going to go to rendering here and I'm going to put on a blend material. And within the color attribute for the blend material, I'm going to click the little checker and I'm going to go to the file node. And then I'm going to go and load up a, I'm going to select this diffuse texture for my dice. And we can see the diffuse texture over here. So we can load this one in by clicking open here. And just like with the can, we can see that something has happened, but not exactly what we would like. If I click on the object, I can see that the texture is being loaded into my UV editor. I'm just gonna reset my UV workspace here for a second, just to gain back some real estate on the left-hand side. So we can see that our model is here and our texture has been loaded in, but just like with the can, we can see that the texture is not appearing correctly and that is because there are no UVs on this box. So let's go and create some UVs. And in this case, I can actually use automatic mapping. Now automatic mapping generally won't work out too well for more complex shapes. Really what it does is it projects the texture from six different sides. Now it just so happens that cubes or boxes have six sides or six faces. So in this case, it will actually work out okay for us. So I'm just opening up the options here and you can see that planes are set to six. So I'm gonna click apply and it is going to get us some UVs and that's the first stage really. We need to create some UVs to play around with. Now I'm going up to the top menu here and there's lots and lots of different options in here for dealing with our UVs. And a lot of these options are also located over here. So for example, if I look under the create dropdown, you'll see automatic, cylindrical, and all of these other ones that we saw up in the create menu are actually located over here as well. We can see we've created some UVs, but that the UVs don't line up with our texture. So let's do another little exercise where we just get used to moving around these UV shells to get them to line up the way that we would like. And as I mentioned in the previous video, a lot of the issues that users run into with UVs is that they don't orientate themselves correctly. So we just need to be a little bit careful that the UV shells that we select over here correspond to the correct UV faces. So let's give it a go and we'll see some of the issues that you might run into. So I'm gonna line up this shell here. So I'm just gonna go to UV shell and hit W to move and I'm gonna move it over to here. And I'll do the same thing for the next shell and I'll move it to here. And you can see it's starting to move around for me. And we're gonna want these dots to be roughly in the center. And I'll do the same thing over here. And for this shell, and for the number six, and for the number five. And that has lined up some of my textures for me. Now, if we look at the back face here, we'll see that we're seeing a shadow. Um, whereas this particular face here is black and that's because lights are turned on in the scene and that's seven on the keyboard to turn lights on in this case i don't want the lights turned on i want to be able to see all the faces of the box so i'm just going to hit six on the keyboard and that's going to turn off the lighting for now but i can see my textures and that's an important thing to note maya by default does not show textures if i press five here the textures all disappear they're there but they haven't been loaded in you have to hit six on the keyboard to show the textures and that's a little gotcha that catches people out 
So here we go, we can see our textures are on our box. Now, if you've ever gambled or played dice games, you will know that, in fact, each side, each opposite side of the die should add up to seven. And that is not the case as these have been laid out. I've got five over here and I've got six on the other side. I've got one on this face and I've got two over here. So in fact, although the UVs are now making a little bit more sense, we haven't really laid out our UV map in a way that maps the textures correctly onto the model. So we're just gonna to need to take a second to move the UV shells around so that each opposite side of our die adds up to seven. So I'm gonna do this quickly uh, within my UV editor here, and I'm just gonna end up manually moving them around. So I've got one on this side, so that would mean that six needs to go on this face over here. So I need to, so one is opposite to six over here. So I need to try and orientate myself correctly. Now I can select UVs, but within the UV editor, and I can select the UV shell out in 3D space. And we can see that this UV shell here, which I want to show six, is currently over two. So I need to move this shell over in my UV space. And I'm gonna move it down here so that it is over six. Okay, now I need to be a little careful. I don't want to overlap the UV shells because then we'll have two sixes appearing and obviously there's only one six on any die. So I'm gonna select this one and I'm just gonna move it over here for the moment. And I'm gonna put this guy right here. And that means that I've got six on one side and I've got one on the other. Now I need to do the same thing for the other sides. So and you've got five over here and I need to have two on the opposite side. So here is my face for five. And this shell that I just moved over to the side is number two. So two and five. And they're not lined up perfectly, but they're good enough for now. And then I've got three and I've got four on the bottom. So now my UV map more accurately reflects the texturing that I want on my 3D model. So we've only loaded in one texture map onto this model. But now that my UV mapping is correct, I could load in other texture maps that I can go and paint to drive different attributes on my shader. So in this case, we've matched our UV shells here to a texture. Usually the process more often goes in the other direction where we create a UV map and when we're happy with the UV map, we take a photograph of it, we take a, what's called a UV snapshot, and then we take that UV snapshot and we can bring it to a 2D painting package like Photoshop, or we could use a 3D painting package like Substance or Maori as well. So we've loaded in one texture map onto our object, and we could tweak this a little bit further, but let's say we're happy with this now. Once our texture map is loaded up for our color attributes, we can also load in other texture maps to drive other attributes on our shader. So if I go back to my shader over here, I can see on my blend shader, I have a color attribute, but I also have a transparency attribute, which I can dial up and down here. And I have an ambient color and an incandescence and a whole load of other ones. And all of these attributes can also be driven by textures. We have one textured image of what we call a diffuse color map. So just the color brought into Maya and lined up to our model in a satisfactory fashion by using this UV mapping process. We can load in other texture maps to drive other attributes on our shader. And often one that we might want to drive would be the specularity or how shiny the shader is. Now to get an idea of the shininess of our model, I need to turn back on my lights here. And once I turn on the lights, you can see at glancing angles here, I start to get a kind of a highlight that runs across the model. And if I was to change the specular roll off here, you'll start to see that I can affect the look and I can change the eccentricity as well to tighten up the hotspot. Now there's quite a few different types of shaders that come with Maya to get different kinds of looks. Uh, but just for now, let's take a look at the shininess value here. And we can have different levels of shininess that run across our model. So let's drive one of these attributes. In this case, I'm gonna drive the specular roll off here. I can see that when it's set to zero, I get no highlight. And when it's set to one, I get a nice highlight running across my surface. So instead of having just an on off switch, I can drive this with a map. And the map will be black and white. And where it's black, we'll get no highlight. And where it's white, we'll get this nice, uh, this nice sheen. So let's go and load in that map. So I'm gonna click this little checker here. I'm gonna go to file. 
and we're going to go and choose our dice spec here and you can see that the numbers are black and that should mean that we won't get any shininess on the numbers on the but we will get shininess on the rest of the dice so let's open this one up the map is working correctly we're not getting any shininess on the actual dots themselves but we are retaining our shininess on the rest of our face and you can see the highlight does not go across the three dots in this case so our specular roll-off attribute now is being controlled by that map. Uh, so I still have access to the other attributes and I can play around with how hot the highlight is going to be. But this particular value is now driven by that map. And I can tell that because it has an incoming attribute here. It has this incoming connection. So that black and white map lines up because it is very similar to our diffuse map. And in general, you will usually create some UVs and then go and create a color map and you're happy with your color map, then you will go and create other maps from your color map. And I'm gonna jump over into Finder because I'm on a Mac and I'm gonna jump into Maya Dice and we can see that our source images are here. And here we can see our diffuse image. And if I take a look at our spec map here, you can see that they're lined up to be the same. And actually this map was created from the diffuse map and it was desaturated in Photoshop and then our levels was done on it to balance up the map so that we would have black where we don't want any shine and white slash gray where we do want some shine. So the process goes that we create our models and we're happy with our model, we don't want to change it anymore. We create a UV map using one of these defaults and I will place the resulting UVs in a, in a logical layout then I will usually take a UV snapshot of it and bring it over into something like Photoshop and I will paint a rough texture map. I will bring that back in and apply it to a shader just to make sure everything lines up. So once I'm happy that they line up, I would go back to my diffuse map and add some more detail to it. Once I'm happy with my overall diffuse color map, I would go and create these other maps such as the specular map or the bump map or whatever other attributes I want to drive in my so in this lesson we looked at UV mapping this box and really it was not too difficult to process because the automatic mapping worked quite well for us here. It just required us to familiarize ourselves with how the UVs are laid out and how each UV island here represents an area of our 3D model. So here we have the rest of the maps loaded onto the dice and what I'd like you to do is give a go at playing around with the UVs on the dice to start off with and putting on the diffuse map and then when that's done you can load on the other maps now in this case i've created a, a type of shader called a fong e and there are lots of different types of shaders in maya and in general we'll use the arnold shaders but for now you can try loading in the maps onto either maybe a fong or to a blin shader and load in the different maps into the different slots and just play around with it and see how you can get different looks. To be able to see the specular highlights properly, you will need a light in the scene and you will need to press seven on the keyboard. Um, you can see that the dots themselves have now got a recess look and that's because I loaded in a bump map into this bump mapping slot here. And it is important to note when you load in a bump map, there's a bump 2D node. The map is driving the bump value and you can control the depth of the map to get a more or less recessed look. This helps with picking up smaller details, usually less than about a millimeter, and it means that we don't have to put in more polygons to pick up these more subtle changes in shape. So to recap, what we want to be able to do is put our texture maps onto our models, and our texture maps are not just our color attributes, we can use texture maps to drive different shading attributes, such as how reflective a surface is. Before we can generate our texture maps, we need to have some form of UVs on our models. And really UV mapping is the process of deciding how we want to lay out those UVs. And then we go away and we paint or photograph images that we wrap onto our 3D models.